It's good that you remember the one half. A lot of people forget the one half in the kinetic energy formula here. More of the units on this. Okay, and that's our answer. All right, and this is a pretty typical type of question. So let's review the steps here. Find the minimum energy for an electron confined uh, to an atom. So the first thing we, uh, we have to do is realize that this is an uncertainty principle problem. And that just comes from experience. That, so that you can know when to use the various ideas. But the reason why, the reason there isn't minimum energy, remember, is the uncertainty principle. Um, because if, there, if something could have zero energy, then we could be exactly certain about its momentum and its position. So everything must always be moving at least a little bit so we can be uncertain about where it is and what its momentum is. So that was the clue that we need to use the uncertainty principle here. Um, the atomic diameter gave us the uncertainty in x. That was the delta x. Uh, then we figured out delta p. And we might as well convert it to meters at the start, put everything into standard units. And then we have to make a little picture like this for the delta p. This is the tricky part. Um, the delta p does not tell you the extreme momentum. It tells you the distances between the extreme momentum. So the extreme momentum is one half. This is the hardest part right here. The extreme momenta are one half of the delta p, because we're centered around zero over here. We don't know if we're going this direction or this direction, say. And then that's the p that you plug into here. You don't plug your uncertainty about your momentum. You plug what the momentum actually could be. You plug what the momentum actually could be. So that would be the most common mistake here, probably, to just plug in delta p and forget this step over here. We have to plug in p, not delta p. Uh, and then we can just uh, check along in the flow charts. So this is now showing us how the flow chart here um, is helpful to us. Um, and it was good that you didn't try to use this flow chart, because after all, this flow chart has energy too. But this would be the flow chart for a photon, not for a particle with mass, like an electron. Um, you could also have found the minimum energy for a proton in a nucleus. And again, that's a particle with mass, so you would use this approach. You wouldn't use this flow chart down here. Something else you could do here then is you could figure out the de Broglie wavelength. How can we figure out the de Broglie wavelength of this electron? Um, <clears throat> by, by using the uh, constant and momentum. Which momentum would we plug in? The 5.3. Right, not the 1.1. Again, the most common mistake would be to try to plug in delta p here, when what we really need is p. Um, So what's our symbol for the uncertainty about the momentum? Delta P. Good. And then what would be an equation that would relate P and delta P? Um, delta P is zero. Right. Or P is delta P times two. Uh, maybe it's always best to draw the picture so you can see why this is correct. Oh, I messed up, didn't I? That's why you should always draw the picture. All right. So what I should have said is that the total uncertainty is twice the extreme values. The total uncertainty is twice the extreme values, but it's maybe safest to always draw the picture because you can just make the same mistake I just made. What's our symbol for the uncertainty about position? Uh, delta X. Good. 
What's the unit for that? I'm sorry? Yeah, the standard unit is meters. And then what's the equation that relates delta x and delta p? h bar, that's pronounced h bar, which is h over 2 pi. But notice, even though this is an inequality, for solving problems, you, you often want to look at the minimum or maximum value. So oftentimes, you would treat this like an equation. We actually did that without talking about that in the last problem. Since we wanted to know the minimum uh, energy, we wanted to use the actual equality version of this. All right, so we can add this to our flowchart. Now we have a more extensive flowchart. If you know the uncertainty in position, you can find the uncertainty in momentum, and then you can use that to figure out the extreme values for the momentum. And the key mistake people make is thinking that they can use delta p as p, when they're really two different things. And once we know the momentum, we're off and flying, we can either go down and find the kinetic energy, or we can find the de Broglie wavelength uh, over here. Again, this is all for particles with mass, like electrons. We wouldn't know how to apply this to a particle without mass because our momentum formula has mass in it. So we won't, uh, we won't be applying momentum to things without mass, although I think there's ways to do that. Okay, so now we have these two flowcharts that show a lot of the different uh, relationships between uh, these things here. This is for photons and this is for particles uh, with mass. Okay, good. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.